Hello everybody, welcome back, my name is Stefan and welcome back to episode 6 of the Army Only Challenge on Extreme Difficulty. Last time we were able to defend against 3 empires at the same time, all thanks to this little empire. I would love to say that that was uh, going to be the last major war that we're going to be in, but unfortunately since this is Grand Admiral with high aggressiveness, the AI is of course going to attack us again and again. To deal with that we're going to have to pull a few tricks and establish our position as much as possible while we are still at peace. Alright, so first thing that we're gonna have to do is maximize efficiency on our planets. We have gone through occupation and so martial law has been put in place. Martial law is absolutely horrible for our economy, so we're gonna make sure to disable that across all our planets. Next we're gonna go ahead and buy some art pieces from the artisans. I did not notice that we actually had these guys discovered last episode. Uh, but looking over the footage, I realized that buying our pieces is exactly what we should have been doing. Our pieces are awesome because they give us a lot of amenities, and these amenities are actually applied after the penalty from devastation. So even on a very highly devastated world, we will still have a little bit of amenity production. So for example, 100% devastation, except art monument, and now we have minus 21 amenities. Not much of a difference, but every little bit helps. What we're also going to want to do is try to make sure we can actually uh, claim a couple of these systems. I see construction ships going through this space. Now, this guy is actually going to be targeting that system first. Uh, that's very unfortunate. Uh, but ideally, we want to reclaim some of these systems and uh, make sure we have a solid connection to the pacifists. Uh, if we do not, we will not be able to use them again to occupy our systems for us. So, we're going to... Okay, never mind. Well, I guess the pacifists missed out. Okay, okay. Hopefully they're gonna go to war with the pacifists at some point, but it seems like we have at least reduced our number of enemies by one. Not too bad. We're also gonna want to go ahead and provide more employment for our population. Right now our employment crisis is critical, and uh, we have to find a job for all these people. Let's also go ahead and buy more strategic resources. I don't think I'll really invest much in producing them, uh, because we can always just sell alloys and buy the strategic resources and make more money that way. Force peace with these guys is going to be running out relatively soon, and I would like to establish as many branch houses as possible in these guys' territory because it's closer and cheaper. Let's also go ahead and uh, invest a little bit in science and unity. We have plenty of energy credits and we can afford to get some deals. Uh, let's also make sure to invest in planetary shields a little bit. Uh, I've almost forgotten to do that and uh, planets like Diem will absolutely fall without planetary shields. Let's make sure we have them. Alright, looks like the war between these guys is over, and now it is very likely that these guys are going to turn their attention towards us. And uh, with large fleets, this is going to be a rough time. But we have weathered tough times before and came out victorious, so that's not going to be too big of an issue. Alright, habitats, this is wonderful, and we're going to be able to build some habitats in uh, something like Sipux. Uh, where there's going to be a relative safety. Alternatively, we can try to build something in Thirish, uh, but I am really unsure about how that's going to interact with the dragon. And uh, plus, Thirish is going to be relatively unsafe once um, the dragon is destroyed. That's going to happen eventually because AI is relatively powerful, and uh, at some point, this system is not going to be restricted for them. Alright, looks like we've also researched the extra civic slot. This also allows us to get colonial bureaucracy, which is going to reduce some of our penalties uh, from admin cap. And now we can also go ahead and uh, take something like, I don't know, free traders. This is going to help our economy a little bit once we can actually afford it. 
has decayed. All right, this was not a surprise. These guys have declared war, uh, but fortunately, we have quite the espionage going on due to our branch offices, so we know exactly where their fleets are going to go. And we also are relatively prepared in terms of devastation. Uh, by the time the fleets of these guys reach us, we will have built up uh, up to 0% devastation. And our planets should be relatively secure with the brand new planetary shields. At this point we have quite a few modifiers affecting planetary bombardment damage. And so hopefully this will not be much of a problem. All right, new leader. Let's see who it is. Okay. Wow, from the ranks. Army morale plus 20%, army experience gain plus 33%. Not bad. Although army morale and experience gain really don't matter. Uh, as long as we're just getting bombarded. So that's the subpar leader. Enemy presence exposed, where is that? Apparently nowhere close. Only all the way over here. Okay. That means they're on the way to DM, uh, but DM fortunately is relatively safe. Planetary shields plus fortress equals god. Uh, plus we should be able to just spam recruit uh, clone armies, uh, which are going to be very cheap and actually just as effective as normal assault armies. Nice. Oh no, we lost an outpost. How awful. Too bad that actually does not constitute any of our defenses. <laughs> I think these guys are too scared to start bombarding our planets. Wow. Alright, we have our next Accenture perk, and we get to make a decent choice. So, what do we want? Do we want One Vision for the uh, decreased amenities, upkeep, and the monthly unity? Uh, this is always a very good Accenture perk. Or do we want the Flesh is Weak and potential extra growth for our species? Hmm. Well, since uh, Machine Ascension is just so OP, I think I'm gonna go for the Flesh is Weak and start the Mechanical Ascension. It's only gonna take 42 months. All things considered, our science production is not too bad. Alright, let's declare martial law, get some extra stability, and generate a few more armies. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> These guys are at war. Aw, oh, that's perfect. A war due to alliances. This means that these guys are actually going to alleviate pressure on our empire because they're at war with these guys. So that's nice. We're not going to close our borders to them. It would make absolutely no sense for us to do so. Oh no, how awful. We have a single battleship in orbit. The damage this guy is inflicting is so meager that it is absolutely completely negligible. Come to think of it, these guys can actually probably completely demolish uh, the dragon guarding uh, Thirish Prime at this point. Yeah, they have a lot of fleet power. We should probably start focusing on actually fortifying Thirish, just in case that happens. At this point, about a third of our science production is actually done uh, outside of our empire, uh, which is quite nice. That means that even if we're completely devastated, uh, we're still gonna get producing. Special project. Alrighty, we have done the first stage of mechanical ascension, and our species is even better as armies. Army damage plus 10%. Excellent. Our garrison is indeed fearsome. And now we're actually capping out on energy credits. I never thought we would actually reach this point, now but we can easily i move some of this stuff into strategic assets. Do you know what? Why not? Let's organize a festival. We're gonna get extra production that way, and uh, we're gonna be able to use some of our energy. Hopefully they don't steal from us. 
They can, but the chances of that happening are relatively low. Ooh, this is nice. Executive Retreat. Uh, this building allows us to uh, build out a branch office and actually increase amenities across our whole empire. This is a very powerful building. What's also unfortunate is that 90% of the technologies now are some sort of fleet technologies, which we have absolutely no use for. I guess we have some use for thrusters and such, because we can mount them on transport fleets. Quick mid-war update. 4% devastation. Planetary shields are amazing. Granted, this is a single battleship, but since calculations are done based on naval capacity and not the actual fleet power, uh, this guy amounts to 8 out of 100 possible, uh, because it caps at 100, naval capacity bombarding this planet. Even in the worst case scenario, DM will be at 40%, planet devastation, and not nearly enough damage will be done to its armies to fully invade and occupy it. That is wonderful. And now we're getting even more army techs. Perfect. We can also probably start funding our first habitat construction. Uh, let's see. Sipix doesn't really have any planets to build habitats around. Uh, and without those, habitats are not worth that much. Oh, what is this? An enemy fleet. Looks like we're gonna see an engagement. Or not. They did not engage the station, which means they are no longer at war. Meaning we are now the threat. Fortunately though, at this point in the war, uh, they can't really do anything to us. They're gonna peace out before anything particular happens. And uh, now we actually have anti-gravity engineering. This is gonna mean that Thrish may soon turn into a booming ecumenopolis. All right, looks like Salvasic is under a little bit more significant bombardment uh, than Diem. But even with a cruiser and 35 destroyers, amounting to roughly 74 uh, out of 100 fleet power, they're barely doing any devastation. Man, I love planetary shields. Ah, finally, all my mega forges. I've been looking for this technology all this time. With that, we're going to be able to upgrade a lot of these guys and uh, get a lot more production and sales going. Looks like uh, the prices for alloys have slumped a little bit, uh, but considering the ongoing warfare, it's not going to be too big of a problem. Now what is a big problem is that leviathans are starting to get defeated, uh, which means that it is very likely that Thrish uh, will get liberated from the shard and our defenses will be gone. Ooh, what happened? I see a lot of systems got taken. And uh, these guys have become a lot more powerful. Fortunately though, it does look like they're a fellow uh, citizen service, so they probably understand our struggle with the armies. Ooh, this is interesting. Looks like these guys are finally about to take down the dragon. Receiving communication. The great dragon, our guardian, has been vanquished. And now Thresh is not safe anymore. That's a bit of a shame. Fortunately, we have a pair for this, and we have a fortress and a planetary shield generator getting built. That's wonderful. Alright, we have completed our first habitat. Now, we should have probably prepared for that for a colony ship, but I honestly was not expecting to complete this. 
and this habitat is going to provide us with a bunch of housing, a bunch of extra production, and a bunch of extra space for refineries and stuff like that. Wonderful. Let's actually go ahead and uh, queue up another one once we have the influence for it. Habitats are going to be great and they're going to skyrocket our economy. And in fact, our economy is already starting to grow. We have moved from second to last to fourth to last. And eventually, we're going to move even further. Our technology score is not too bad. We are ahead of some empires, although we do have empires far, far in advance of us in terms of technology, uh, which we will certainly have to catch up to anytime between now and the crisis, which should come roughly in around 2325. We're going to have to build up our planets in preparation for that, uh, because once that comes, and uh, if it comes close, we will be under heavy bombardment and under threat of very large armies coming from the crisis. Ooh, that is interesting. We got another war declaration. And these guys want everything. Alright. Now, a two front war is going to be a little bit more scary. Uh, because... Oh, actually, we have an ally on our side. That's interesting. Alright, looks like the pacifists are going to be fighting on our side. Uh, but as I was saying, Savasik uh, is going to be particularly vulnerable because at this point it is at 57% devastation. And even though at this point in the game, a single round of warfare cannot take down a planet to 100% devastation, wars in succession certainly can. So that might be a very big problem and we might want to start spamming armies on Savasic Prime. In fact, let's go ahead and start spamming clones. Clones take 30 days to actually produce, uh, which is significantly better than assault armies, and uh, provide just as much health. That means that we're getting three times as much protection from clone armies as we do from assault armies, and these guys are also cheaper to sustain. That is interesting. Also, these guys just realized their mistake and broke their agreement uh, to protect us. But fortunately, it doesn't matter. These guys are at war now, and they're going to have to defend our territory. I love it. Wow, that's a lot of fleet power. Holy hell. That is over a hundred thousand fleet power right there. Enemy presence exposed. Interesting. I wonder if these guys have firepower to match. So the pacifists are right here in terms of score, and the council is right here. I think they have a chance, but I'm not sure if they're going to be able to push the uh, council back. Exposed. At least not yet. Enemy we'll have to endure bombardment across all our planets before this is over. Although fortunately, clone armies are very good. So we might reach 100% devastation, but that's not going to mean death to our economy. Looks like Thresh Prime is finally under bombardment, uh, but fortunately we do have the infrastructure set up because I actually decided to think in advance. The only problem with this is that eventually our economy is going to go significantly down uh, because of a lack of alloy production. Uh, that is our biggest worry right now, and uh, honestly I don't really have a way to counter that. You just have to wait and see and hope for the best. Enemy oh wow, these guys are actually offering a status quo. Yeah, let's go for that. Uh, but anyways, we'll see what happens with this in the next episode. For now, I'll wrap this up. And actually, I just noticed. The Council of Themel has annexed this little chunk of space. Meaning that at this point, we're only surrounded by them. No other empire is within contact. And so if we sustain this round of war, we might be able to actually just become completely immune. At a certain point, the enemy will simply not have enough time to devastate our planets and kill our armies enough to really hurt our economy and uh, take any planets. So if we survive this one, now we'll be good to go until at least the crisis comes. At which point we're going to have a lot of fun because once crisis destroys stations, we'll be able to take the planets. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Uh, but we'll see how that goes, and for now, we'll call it quits. So, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, chill interlude episode. And uh, I think in the next one, we'll start to see the crisis start to show its ugly head. Uh, but anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.
Thanks and bye-bye.